And what I see, especially in the community of Dubai, which is where I live, that very few athletes are paying attention to preventing injury and also are focusing on their strength and conditioning program. Not only now, is it in this video, I'm going to outline my specific program based on my specific sport, which right now is cycling. And a strength and conditioning coach is essential to work alongside a seasonal objective. Hi, I'm Christian Williams, transformation coach, ex-bodybuilding champion, winning multiple titles, and always been passionate about the intricacies of the human body, mind, and peak performance. Over the last year and a half, I've transitioned into more of an endurance sport, and that has opened up an opportunity to help many athletes also design a strength and conditioning program that is specific for their sport. Now, in this video, I'm gonna outline my specific program based on my specific sport, which right now is cycling. As you can see, I'm carrying a lot of muscle mass, but this comes from my bodybuilding history. What I'm doing in the gym right now is actually just two gym sessions a week, and they are specifically focused on improving my cycling performance, but also making sure that I'm strong off the bike, making sure that my posture is good, that my core is strong and I'm limiting the risk of injury. Now what I see, especially in the community of Dubai, which is where I live, that very few athletes are paying attention to preventing injury and also are focusing on their strength and conditioning program. Not only is it important, it's actually necessary. If you look at all the top athletes, they have coaches from every field. They have a sports specific coach. They might have a dietitian. They might have a sports psychologist and they have a strength and conditioning coach. And a strength and conditioning coach is essential to work alongside a seasonal objective. Right now, I'm in what you could consider my off season. If you're familiar with bodybuilding, you know what that entails. With cycling, it's about improving my base training. And at the same time, this is where I can improve my strength in the gym. After a few months of base training, my training in the gym will transition into more sport specific. It'll go from strength to actually power, speed, and functionality. Today's workout is one of two workouts. And the first workout I did previous in the week was focused on bilateral movements, basic movements like squats, like deadlifts, like lunges. Now you're gonna see me do more unilateral movements. And I'm gonna take you through exactly how my workout looks from start to finish. There's gonna be three exercises for the lower body, three exercises for the upper body. And remember, as much as we're not trying to build muscle, we're trying to maintain good posture and good strength in all round, okay? And then we're gonna do three exercises for lower body. Every workout should comprise of a really good warm up, a functional warm up, and also a cool down. And you're gonna see just that. So come with me. We have 24 Fitness here in Dubai. Come and check the space out. Stay tuned and pick up what you can.
So a big part of the warm-up is functional. We should be doing a ramp warm-up, raising the heart rate, activating the muscles, mobilizing and potentiating. I do three rounds of this and it takes me 10 to 15 minutes and you should too, especially if you're doing a sport specific program. Remember, we're not trying to build a lot of muscle, we're trying to stay functional. And the warm up is actually part of the workout where we can make sure that we prevent an injury. Three rounds going through transitions, opening up the body, activating the body and making sure the body and the mind is prepared for the rest of the workout. So, now we are going to do a Bulgarian squat. Well, actually, I've done two sets. I'm going to move into my final set. Now, as I mentioned, one workout of the week would have been focused on bilateral squats. So that would have been a, back bell, a barbell back squat or a pendulum squat or a hack squat for both legs together. The benefit of doing a single leg unilateral and in a position where obviously your stability is challenged is not only the muscles of the legs going to work like the quadriceps, the glutes, hamstrings, calves but also it's going to improve your stability through the ankle joint and for my case and most sports because when I'm pushing down through the pedals the more stability I have in the ankle the more direct power I can push down and that is why this particular exercise is really good to open the hips up activate the muscles but also improve that stability and that direct power. So now we got the single leg squats, of course. I'm using um, Olympic rings use a TRX so you can use a stand, but the idea is the same. We're working on stability, we're working on overall balance, we're getting the body used to this press and movement, but also controlling the upper body also. Now, I'm not taxing my muscles, we're not doing a bodybuilding workout, I can't stress this enough. It's all about making sure that all the muscles are firing in the right order and making sure they're coming together as one. I'll do a final set of bodyweight single leg squats, before moving on to the final exercise of the lower body part of the workout. One thing I'm making sure I'm doing though is keeping my knees in line with my toes. It gives me a good amount of stability and ensuring that everything is working in alignment, hips, knees and ankle. Now, as you can see, I'm doing things which are challenging my stability. I'm doing a single leg Romanian deadlift using one kettlebell. But as you can see probably from the video, my one side has less stability than the other. So if I wasn't doing a unilateral movement, I wouldn't be aware of this. So a really good exercise, like I said, to improve the strength of the muscles, but also the balance and stability. And all the muscles we worked so far in today's workout are muscles that work during that revolution of the cycle, which I'll explain when we finish the workout in a bit more detail. But first, we've got one more set of this exercise.
So now we obviously into the upper part of the workout. Now, as much as we build in strength for cycling, the upper body is involved tremendously. Think about it, when you're pulling on the bars in a sprint, or even just holding yourself down on the drops, there's a lot of muscular endurance needed. Not only that, but being this, in this position for too long is gonna pronate the shoulders and put the lower back under vulnerability. So by doing inverted rows, we're working on the rhomboids, improving the posture. By doing push-ups, we're working on the muscles that are gonna keep us in that position for long enough. And also by doing tricep close grip press, we're working on the endurance. Not only that, we need to make sure we maintain in muscle mass to a degree to keep metabolism healthy. What I do, however, because the objective is muscle endurance, the reps go up to 15 and I work in a super style or super set circuit manner from one exercise to another and I rest very little in between. I'm gonna do my final set before we transition into the core workout. So now we're into the core part of the workout. And as I mentioned, with the lower body, with the rep range is low or eight to 10. For the upper body, because there's more endurance involved in these muscles, the repetitions go a little bit higher. And obviously the core, there's a lot more endurance involved. So we go into 20 repetitions. We start with a crunch cycle. So I'm getting my lower abdominal to work like they would in the pedal stroke whilst in the crunch position. Then I'm making sure my lower back is strong by doing a Superman pause. I'm, I'm contracting here in a nice safe manner. And then I'm going into a plank. Now, for me, I can hold a plank for many minutes. In fact, there was a time where I did a plank test and I did 10 minutes. By doing a plank reach out, not only is it shortening my time to still get the same activation, but it's challenging my core in a different way where I'm holding myself with one position and I'm reaching out. Think about like on the bike. A lot of times you, you put in a lot of power or stability in one area. So the more stable you are starting with the core, the better power you can out and the longer you can stay in a core position. We do one more round and then we're gonna close it down with some stretching. So now we're gonna do some stretching. As I said at the beginning, you should always start the workout with a really good warm up, but you should always finish the workout with a really good cool down. This is not only to get the body relaxed and to reduce some of the inflammation caused by the workout, but also it's about the heart and the mind, right? About getting into that parasympathetic nervous system fast so the recovery can take place. So whether I'm on the bike or I'm in the gym, I always do five to 10 minutes cooling down. And I usually listen to music that helps calm me down as well to put myself into that state. In particularly when I've done a workout like today, I'm mindful of the tightness I have in my hamstrings. So I like to stretch my hamstrings, just hold the body into a nice 20 second plus stretch. I like to do this and then I like to stretch my hip flex. I noticed today I was a bit tight in the hip flexor, so the workout made me aware of some areas were tight. Obviously, I'm gonna stretch my quadriceps. But that concludes the workout pretty much. Now, you would have noticed today that my workout intensity was not very high. Although I went through all the exercises, I didn't push myself with the weights that I knew I could lift. Coming from a bodybuilding and strength building background, have a lot of strength 
Today I was using very light weights. But my main focus is to progress through my cycling. So you'll see my cycling program now that I'm in off season is progressively overloaded. But so is my gym workout. So last week I started with light weight and built the weight up heavier. This week I did three sets at that heavier weight when I did use the weights. And I will still progress that over the next couple of weeks. And I will fit I will fit the deload into my strength training program as well as my cycling program. Maybe four weeks, five weeks in, I'll revisit things. I'll take a recovery week and then I'll push again. The other thing you might notice from my workout is that the rep range is not really strength. I'm working in the 10 rep range for legs. And again, this is because I come from a background where I have a lot of strength. I don't want to go lifting the weights I could for lower repetitions. Now, that doesn't mean that you should do the same. You might need to improve your muscular strength. And that is the point of this whole video. As much as there are guides that you can follow, like the exercise I've outlined, like the warm-up that I did and the cool-down that I'm doing, what you should get from this video is that the program should be very specific to where you currently are based on your objectives and your goals, your current level, your past experience, like any injuries you have or any information your body might be carrying, as well as your mindset. And that program needs to be really specifically tailored around you. If you follow a generic outcome, then the outcome is going to be randomized. You need to work with a professional like me who can help design a program that's very specific based on your level, your capabilities and exactly what you need right now. The last thing you want to do is do a strength and conditioning program that jeopardizes your sport. And that is why somebody like myself who is a strength and conditioning coach works alongside annual plans and seasonal programs with sports specific coaches. I have clients from tennis players to cyclists to triathletes to runners and I help them design the plan specifically that's based around their seasonal goals also, not just their individuality. So that is a take home message that I hope that you get from this program. You can follow exactly what I do and that will be a good guide if you are doing none of the above but you should take and extract what you think is applicable to you and put that into the time of year, whether that's right now or later on, when it's applicable to your objectives and your goals. And like I mentioned, if you do want to work with me specifically, then you can find in the link of the description below a link to our website. You can check out the different programs we have. We're always available to sit down with you for a consultation with no strings attached just to understand your goals. And if you feel that we are the right fit, then we can work together. And like many of the clients that we work with, you will achieve in a short space of time, probably the results that you've always wanted to, but never did. I'm Christian Williams. I'm gonna continue the stretching. Thanks for listening. Comment below any question you have. Train smart, train in bull mode. Hashtag.